Hey, welcome back. We're here to talk about evaluating as a reading strategy today. So get your notes out and let's get started. So Winston Churchill, um, who was the Prime Minister of Great Britain, once said, true genius resides in the capacity for evaluation of uncertain, hazardous, and conflicting information. So that quote is kind of central to this reading strategy. Okay, so the definition of what we are doing, evaluating, it's the ability to judge the value of material. For example, your ability to judge uh, a statement, a novel, a poem, a research report, anything that you might come across in the world for a given purpose. And we want to educate you in school to be good evaluators so that you don't just passively accept everything that you hear. In order to be a positively contributing member of society, you have to be able to think for yourself. And evaluation is part of that. So, kind of a note on making judgments. Um, evaluating and judgments are not synonymous, they're not synonyms. Do not think of judging something as negative, as in, that girl is judging me because my clothes aren't fancy enough for her snooty, snot-nosed taste. There are judgments like that that happen in your world every day, especially in a high school setting. But when we're talking about evaluating a source or something that you're reading, we're not talking about making the negative types of judgments. We're talking about using your brain to assess what you're thinking about. So think of judging something as a critical thinking task that asks you to look at a text with a critical eye. Okay, so how do you go about making judgments? Well, judgments should be based on definite criteria which might be internal in terms of the organization of the source or external, your purpose for reading it. Um, students may determine the criteria, so you might determine your criteria for evaluating, or sometimes your teachers will give you the criteria and say, okay, here's an article on this, evaluate it for its persuasive value. What does it need to be more persuasive? What is it lacking? What does it have that's good? So why is evaluating so important? Well, learning outcomes in this area are highest in the cognitive hierarchy, which is like a fancy mouthful way of saying, basically, when you're evaluating something, you're really thinking at a higher order level, and that's what we want to see you doing. Um, it asks you to make conscious value judgments based on clearly defined criteria, so you're being able to follow directions or even set your own directions and follow those. And most importantly, in my opinion, it makes you more interesting if you can evaluate something instead of accepting everything that you hear and read without question. Because if everyone did that in the world, then we would be screwed. We all have to be able to think for ourselves. Okay, so I want to show you just some examples of evaluating. Now, something that you guys might like to do is shop when you have the money. I understand. I rarely ever have money to shop. Um, however, I like to shop, so I picked something that I thought maybe everyone would be interested in, which is shoes. So we are going to look at three different websites for shoes, and I want to be thinking about evaluating these websites in terms of their purpose and their effectiveness. So their purpose is to advertise shoes and to convince people to buy those shoes, right? That's the whole purpose of a website that sells things. So let's start with Finish Line's website. This is what you see when you go to their homepage. Um, you can see here at the top, they've got a whole list of tabs that you can click on, which is nice because it separates the information for you. Um, this has got kind of a nice little picture up here that changes every once in a while, but not too often to make you crazy. Um, they've got the top brands listed here in the middle, and then they've got some pictures of shoes, some deals. Um, they have their best-selling shoes featured. This at the bottom 
If I'm a buyer, I'm not going to read that. Um, we got some customer hours. But what I'm thinking is, okay, I want to shop for a pair of shoes for, let's say, um, a high school girl. So really, the only thing that's going to benefit me is to go up here to women's shoes. And we're going to look for sandals and flip-flops, let's say, because it's still practically summer. All right, so if I am a girl looking at this, pretending like I'm half my age, minus a couple more years, um, the only ones up here I like are that pink and black one and the white and black one, personally. Then I go down, they have all their sales listed, it's the end of summer sale. Okay, so, I mean, this website is okay. Um, it's, it's fairly helpful for its purpose. It is really easy to tell where the sales are, which is important to me if I'm on a budget. I'm going to click on this one because that aqua and white shoe is standing out to me. And uh, I'm going to look to see how much it is. $19.98 marked on from $27.99. Okay, whatever. So we've seen this one. Now, I would probably give this like maybe an 8 out of 10. I think that the organization could be a little bit better. And that home page, it's good, but it's just a little bit too busy for my liking. Um, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Let's go over to Foot Locker's website. Now, this is what you see when you go to the Foot Locker website. And I'll tell you right now, this hurts my eyes. I don't know if this is a beneficial background for everyone who would want to look at this website. Their pictures change much more frequently than the finish line website and there's black and the red font and white font is like making me squint to read it almost. Um, I go down, they've got more pictures that are moving. Um, it's like little squares of stuff everywhere. So to me this is hard to read. Um, let's try to find some high school boys shoes this time. Let's say um, we're going to look for some Converse. Maybe. All right. So here we have some men's Converse. And I'm going to say... You know me and my aqua. I'm going to click on this one. They have four and a half stars after all. Okay, these are on sale also. $39.99. They were $64.99. So when you get to the shoe page, I have no problem with this website in terms of evaluating it for its effectiveness. This one is just as easy to use as finish lines, but the home page is what bothers me. And so I just question why their marketing team would have set up their home page like that. Let's go to the third website we're comparing and um, evaluating today. So Champs Sports. And this website here, um, what do you think? It's okay, right? I mean, it has a scrolly thing at the top. It's organized fine. It does have some black, but it's got the white framing that helps to make it stand out. In fact, I'm attracted to these shoes right here, so I'm going to click on these and see how much they are. Roundhouse Instinct. I wonder if that means that, like, Chuck Norris would have worn them? I don't know. Okay, $104. Well, I don't think that these are on sale, but they're cool nonetheless. All right, so um, the whole point is, anytime you are being a consumer, anytime you are sitting in this world and being a part of it, there's something to be evaluating and thinking about while you're just sitting there. So tomorrow when you guys come to class, we're going to practice evaluating um, text that you would read because it's an English class, but we do want you to think about evaluating as a skill that is transferable to every area of your life possible. So that's it for today, and we will see you tomorrow.